Hey folks, Jordan with the Young Turks and TYT Politics. Hope you're doing well. Coming to you from New York, I am uh, about an hour away from heading to D.C. for some weekend festivities for the Young Turks. We're going to be uh, down there doing a, a, a watchdog dinner as well as a climate change march, which apparently I'll be leading. So I will be wearing my Make America Sane Again hat because the country's falling apart, folks. So make America Sane Again. As I told you in the past, uh, full disclosure, this is my uncles uh, who created the hat and shirts. So if you like them, that's MakeAmericaSane.com. Now today is Bring Your Child to Work Day. So flip it up, flip around the camera. My son, Sam Siegel, uh, I call him Status Quo Sam. He uh, was an intern for the Young Turks. Uh, he's been editing now for the Young Turks. So he's going to uh, join me as we... Uh, continue to explain the hijacking of our democracy by uh, Kelsey Warren, if you don't know, uh, is the CEO of Energy Transfer Partners. Energy Transfer Partners is the parent company for the Dakota Access Pipeline, uh, as well as other pipelines, including the Trans-Pecos Pipeline. Hello, Emma Viglin. Nice of you to join. Uh, again, make America sane again. So, Kelsey Warren, uh, during the Dakota Access Pipeline standoff between water protectors and on uh, water protectors and police, Kelsey Warren offered the Morton County Sheriff in North Dakota to literally pay their bills. So essentially, you rough up the, these hippie environmentalists uh, and we'll pay you. That was public. He offered to pay. Uh, in terms of the Trans-Pecos Pipeline in Texas, Kelsey Warren, uh, in, in f asking for permits, never actually filed for an export permit. Why? Because originally, Kelsey Warren and Energy Transfer Partners made it seem like their pipeline in Texas was going to be an intra-intra-state pipeline, meaning only going from point A to point B to point C in Texas. It was only months after they started building that he filed for a foreign exports pipeline uh, permit. Why? Because the pipeline is going from Texas under the Rio Grande into Mexico. They're going to take the oil, liquefy it in Mexico, and then sell it to China. And they are literally using eminent domain, literally eminent domain, through people's backyards, mostly conservative ranchers, uh, in Texas to sell oil to China. You know, eminent domain for, high, for schools and highways and things that are actually for the public good. No, 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 no. If Kelsey Warren builds a politician's coffers, We'll, we'll, we'll dig up people's backyards. If you go to TYT Politics, youtube.com slash TYT Politics, you could go to Playlist, Trans-Pecos Pipeline. I interviewed ranchers, conservative ranchers in Texas, who literally had the pipeline, Trans-Pecos Pipeline, going through their backyard 400 yards from their window. So if there's an explosion, goodbye house, goodbye people. So Kelsey Warren, who doesn't give a damn about the environment, does not give a damn about people, uh, really only gives a damn about himself and his bottom line. He's worth $7.8 billion, right? So Kelsey Warren has, uh, for about a year, uh, been temporarily serving on the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission as a board member. So does that seem odd to you? Does that seem odd that the CEO of a giant oil company would be on the board of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission. You know, a commission that's, I think, supposed to protect the environment and the parks and the wildlife. I think. Okay, so he's been on this board. Why? Because the governor, Greg Abbott, who Kelsey Warren literally gave $500,000 in cash. Cash money, baby, cash money. He gave Kelsey Warren $500,000 in cash during his campaign. This is like old school 1920s mafioso stuff. And Greg Abbott, in return, put him on the board and also put his wife on, I think, the Humanities Commission or some nonsense. I'm sure his wife's lovely. No knock on you, man. So this was interim. Interim. So a, uh, about a week ago, I believe, um, you know, there was... There was discussion at the Texas Senate on why, uh, if they should permanently vote Kelsey Warren onto the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission. Uh, that, that vote was, uh, it, it got out of committee 
Uh, so the, the committee uh, voted. I think it's the nominations committee in Texas uh, voted to move it out of committee, and then it would move to the Texas Senate. So let me give you the news uh, about our democracy continuing to be hijacked. Uh, this is uh, straight from the Sierra Club. In a swift move, the Texas Senate approved the appointment of Kelsey Warren, CEO of Energy Transfer Partners, to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Commission of the Senate, on the Senate floor today. The vote was 22 to 9 and came with little notice. Go figure. There was little notice to let environmental activists, water protectors, that they'd be voting on this big oil corrupt goon being voted in as a board member. No notice. Voting with Republicans in favor of Warren's nomination were Democratic Senators Eddie Lucio, Eddie Lucio, that's Eddie, E-D-D-I-E, last name is L-U-C-I-O, he's a Democrat from Brownsville, Texas, and Juan Cho Choi Hinojosa, I'm totally mispronouncing his name, that's Juan, J-U-A-N, nickname, uh, C-H-U-Y, last name H-I-N-O-J-O-S-A, and he is a Democrat represented McAllen, Texas. All other Democratic senators voted no. The quick nature of the vote indicated Senate Republicans did not want to draw attention to it. Warren's name was not even mentioned when the vote was called. He was only referred to as the nominee on the floor. In response, Cyrus Reed, cons conservation director of the Sierra Club's Lone Star chapter, issued the following statement. In a session riddled with irresponsible and discriminatory le legislation and disrespect for democratic processes, it is especially saddening to see Senators Lucio and Hinojosa and all Republican senators vote to appoint a person so fundamentally opposite of the mission of the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. Kelsey Warren cares about pipelines, not the protection and preservation of our state's most treasured spaces. Today, the political contributions made by Kelsey Warren and Energy Transfer Partners to Governor Abbott, Senator Lucio, Senator Hinojoso, and many others won out over democracy. As despicable as this appointment is, and as underhanded as Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick and Senator Birdwell's tactics were, we are undaunted and will continue to be part of the movement towards a more equitable, sustainable, and just Texas. <laughs> well, just Texas, uh, that's, that's, that's a long way from happening. Before I go on, Sam Siegel, what do you think? Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of things to take into consideration here. Number one, this has been in the works for a very long time. Um, Kelsey Warren gave about $100,000 to Donald Trump's victory fund. So this whole thing of, of, you know, oh, maybe the North Dakota pipeline wasn't going to happen. They've been planning this forever. This was going to happen. If Donald Trump became president, they were going to continue on with North Dakota pipeline, continue on with the Trans-Pecos pipeline, whatever was in the way. Now Donald Trump's even talking about the Keystone pipeline going back into play. Other thing to it is also is, is Kelsey Warren has been in uh, the pocket of, of, uh, politicians in Texas forever. Rick Perry, he donated to his campaign for both governor six, and president. Six million dollars. Six million dollars. He, he um, gave money to Greg Abbott's campaign. Greg Abbott and Donald Trump love each other. Greg Abbott and Rick Perry love each other. Um, you know, uh, one of the quotes I remember, I just looked it up, that Greg Abbott said was that there's great similarity between Trump goals and Texas goals. So these guys, they were ready for a guy like Trump to come in and let them keep going with all of the pipelines and all of the destruction that they're doing to the environment. So this couldn't have gone any better plans. And not to mention Rick Perry is now in Donald Trump's cabinet. So Kelsey Warren is basically getting everything that he wants. All of his finances are paying off now. So, yeah. By the way, folks, I was joking. He's not my son. I don't have any children that I know of. He's my friend. But, you know, might as well be my son. Now... Instead of ranting, which I would like to do, I just want to make several points. Texas is the number one uh, producer of oil and gas in the country. North Dakota is number two. Okay? So, at a certain point, at a certain point, even the conservatives, even the conservatives need to realize that the air is being polluted, the, their water is being 
poisoned. I interviewed conservatives uh, who have their land, who have their uh, ranches that they spent their whole lives saving for. Uh, and Kelsey Warren is putting pipelines through, claiming eminent domain. And these folks, and I, and I believe this, I think Republicans largely care about an issue when it affects them. So do neoliberals. Other than that, fuck off. They don't care about other people. And share this video, please. Get this out there. But at a certain point, people need to stand up. Not just when the Dakota Access Pipeline uh, demonstrations are going on and there's an encampment, but every single day. Because this stuff is happening in the darkness of night. And we're not, we cannot depend on the corporate media to report on it, call it out, and call it what it is, which is corruption. There is no democratic country that would put a oil and gas executive, and by the way, I'm not demonizing every single oil and gas worker, okay? For some things in our country, oil and gas are uh, relevant. Not, not many. I, I do believe we have the potential to go completely wind and solar quickly. But this is corruption. I mean, that's not my opinion. That's a fact. Kelsey Warren has given millions and millions of dollars to Texas politicians, to North Dakota politicians. I mean, go through the list. And now he's serving on a board where he is going to play a part in decisions made about wildlife and parks, and by the way, pipelines going through Texas. It's, it's, it's outrageous. It's outrageous. This would be like, well, just as outrageous as the CEO of ExxonMobil becoming our Secretary of State. I mean, I will give credit to Trump and the Texas politicians in that they're not hiding the corruption. They're not hiding like, like neoliberals and Democrats try to hide that they're the corrupt. They're just waving the flag out there and saying, hey, this is how we do business. Take it or leave it. What are you going to do about it? And Kelsey Warren is a, is a man who literally is digging a pipeline, a natural gas pipeline, uh, through the Big Bend region, which was one of the most precious regions in our country. Tourists from around the country, from around the world, go down to the Big Bend region, which is in West Texas, have beautiful parks, beautiful uh, scenery, beautiful wildlife. And he's building a pipeline through it. And don't, do not mistake it. If Texas Warren, if Kelsey Warren could make a few billion dollars, he'd fucking build a pipeline right through a daycare center, right through a nursery. Because these people don't have ethics or morals. And I want to say something. Yes, it's, it's disgusting that two Democrats in Texas, I mean, I don't know who they are, I gave you their names, voted for, the, for this man. But let's not just excuse the Republicans who voted for him. Yes, we know Republicans are corrupt, but let's not just say, oh, they're corrupt, so let's, you know. No, any politician, I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, or a fucking marshmallow, who voted to put this guy, this plutocrat, on a board that's going to make decisions about the environment in Texas, which is already very polluted. There are oil spills and oil explosions every single week in Texas, and 90% of them are not even reported, folks. So shame on the Republicans and the Democrats. And shame on the media. Have you heard about this yet, other than my report? You heard it on CNN, New York Times, anywhere. So let me tell you something, folks. As I reported uh, two weeks ago, there are water protector camps popping up all over this country. Pennsylvania, Florida, Michigan, uh, Texas, South Dakota. Now there's some might, might be popping up in uh, Oregon and elsewhere. I just give you the information. I can't tell you what to do. Uh, you know, check out my videos from Little Creek Camp and from the Flint Camp, Flint, Michigan. It's outrageous. And, you know, the corporate media likes to talk about, well, we can't, we can't normalize Donald Trump and his racism. We can't normalize Donald Trump and his racism and xenophobia and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, I agree with that. 
Donald Trump needs to be called out. But you got to walk, you got to walk uh, and chew gum at the same time. You can't normalize corruption. It's the pro- part of the reason Donald Trump is president, a reality TV star idiot, is president, is because we have normalized corruption in, th- in this country to the point that millions and millions of people in Michigan and Wisconsin and Ohio and Florida and uh, all states that typically go Democrat are sick of it and wanted to change and, and were fooled by this man. The Democrats who voted for this guy in Texas should be ashamed of themselves. The Republicans who voted for this guy in Texas should be ashamed of themselves. And by the way, Kelsey Warren has said, I will recuse myself from, from uh, votes that have to do with the, any pipelines. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. He's going to recuse himself. So what? His influence is there. You think Kelsey Warren pushed to be on this board? To be in photo ops? He could recuse himself. That doesn't mean he he hasn't bought off the votes of the rest of the board. And credit, by the way, to Louis, uh, I'm going to fuck up his last name, uh, Mont Montsivios, who is a water protector uh, down there who's been doing a lot of great uh, activism and reporting on the Trans-Pecos pipeline. But I'm going to keep reporting on these things. Whether we win, lose, or draw, uh, you need to know that our, our government is bought off. Uh, corruption is... Pretty much, if you're corrupt and pay the most, you could get, you could be a big oil guy that gets on a government board that pretty much decides if you could have big oil, destroy the economy, I, destroy, destroy the environment. Close Samuel. Well, I don't know if you guys um, have seen my other videos before, but uh, I'm needless to say, a little more optimistic than Jordan is sometimes. A lot more establishment than Jordan is. A little more, little more status quo-y. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but to be honest, guys, um, I, I don't think that anybody should be discouraged by any of this because at the end of the day, you got to know that these guys are on the ropes. These guys are completely on the ropes. Never has there been a time where there's been so much emphasis on what's been happening with these pipelines. The North Dakota pipeline was beautiful. Now people are starting to open up and be, and be awoken by all these pipelines that are going on around the country, whether it's Keystone or Trans-Pecos, whatever. Um, but also, let's keep in mind that this oil will run out eventually. And these guys know this. And right now they're trying to get every last cent they can get out of the ground and destroy our environment any way they can to make a, bunk, make a buck. But they know that they are on the ropes right now and they're running out of oil and they're running out of public support. There's never been a time in history where these oil executives have been under so much scrutiny and so much pressure. I know it may not seem like a lot of pressure and a lot of scrutiny because mainstream media isn't covering it as much, but people are becoming awoke and people are becoming educated on these matters. And they're realizing more and more, if you look at every poll every single day, people are are getting more educated on climate change and the effects of drilling, fracking, and putting pipelines into the ground. So just know that all this pressure, whether it's the Young Turks or the personal activism that you guys are doing, whatever it is, you are putting pressure on these guys and their time is running out. So just please keep that optimism and keep pushing because I'm telling you right now, it may not seem like it, but they are very, very scared about what's gonna happen to them in the next few years. They will lose their power. And if you want to hear more preaching uh, from Sam, his rapper name is Dr. Dreidel, and he raps on the subway in New York City. That's Dr. Dreidel. Look it up. Uh, I will close with this because i got to go make uh, uh, an Amtrak. My hat says Make America Sane again for a reason. MakeAmericaSane.com, by the way. This is fucking insane. It's insane what we continue to allow these criminals This is criminal, what these politicians are doing. But I'm only one person, so I could report on it, I could rant on it, I could do all those things, but you got to do something too. So get the information, call these politicians, these spineless people that voted for him, protest if you're in Texas, and make sure there is attention on every single time that board votes on something. Don't just let them do it. Don't just share this video and then forget about it. Uh, I agree with Ted Cruz on one thing and one thing only. We do have to take the country back.
but the difference is it's not we're not taking it back to 1950 we're taking it forward thanks for watching guys at jordan charitin on twitter and uh you can watch uh, this and other videos on youtube.com slash tyt politics